Welcome to this video tutorial on asset management using GLPI. We are planning to do multiple videos, and this video, part one, is basically an overview on what GLPI can do for you. Briefly, here is a little information about our company, Altnix. Altnix is an official GLPI partner in the U.S. In fact, it's the only GLPI partner in the U.S. In our service portfolio, we focus on open source ITSM products. We also offer services for open source monitoring tools. We offer managed services for these tools, and we provide 24-7 support. Finally, we also give you cloud SaaS offerings for these particular products. To contact us, please do write us an email, sales at altnix.com, or give us a call at 1-800-913-5553. So what is GLPI? GLPI is essentially an open source tool for technology management and ITSM. This tool has been around for quite a number of years and we have been using it for many years now. We like the tool and it's an enterprise grade tool that's simple and easy to use. It is also a robust platform and is compliant with ITIL processes. We will look at some of those features and how you can use them in your setup. GLPI is backed by a wide customer base. There are many companies and organizations that are using GLPI already. So it's a nice product to use because you are going to get a lot of support from the developer community. In fact, there are a bunch of plugins that the developer community has developed and published on the plugins page. Using them, you can extend the functionality of GLPI but we will talk about that towards the end of this presentation. On a high level, GLPI is basically an IT asset management tool. That's what it started out as. You can manage your entire end-to-end -end IT inventory. Plus, there are a lot of customizations that it can do. It can extend the concept of asset management bundled with IT. It can do a lot more with asset management now. Then there are the IT asset features such as ticketing, change management, and problem management. We also have management tools, additional tools for doing supply management, contracts management, and different types of other admin features that makes it very easy to use. So look at them in detail. The other interesting thing about the tool is that it's a true multi-tenancy architecture. A single GLPI instance can be used with multiple companies. It can have multiple departments within a single company can control how users are going to use GLPI, what kinds of screens they are able to see, what kind of functions they are going to have in each other's screens. So this is a multi-user, multi-tenant product. While this is open source by design, which means that every screen can be customized, the workflows that are offered in GLPI can be modified or extended, or in many cases you can add any workflow that does not exist in GLPI. A lot of models and features can be added to increase the functionality. Plus, it's also possible to integrate with other third-party tools, such as a marketing tool or an ERP tool that you might already be using at a company. So let's jump into the tool and see all the features that it offers. I'm going to start with a high-level menu. This menu is organized into six different items, or menu buckets. The first one is what is called Assets. This is where you define your inventory and keep track of what's happening with your inventory. Second menu is assistance. This is where you get a lot of ideas and features. There's a module called management, which allows some basic management features. We'll cover them soon in a couple of slides. Then there are tools which allow you to do projects, knowledge base, reservations, and reports. And in the admin, you'll find ways to manage your users, groups, entities, and rules and other admin tasks that you probably want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, you have the setup menu. Here is where you can do a lot of advanced configuration and customizations. Now, in this presentation, we will not be covering some of the advanced topics. We will just start with the basics, and then maybe in later training, we'll cover the topics in more detail. The first one to talk about is the Assets menu or Asset Inventory menu. Under Asset Inventory, you can maintain IT Asset Events Inventory for different types of assets that are commonly found in your IT environment. This includes computers, networks, monitors, and software. 
We also have printers, devices and peripherals, consumables and phones. Under consumables, you'll be using items like printing paper, stationery, notepads, pens, and other items which are consumed on a daily basis and which needs to be refilled. And that's something that you can track using the GLPI. For both of these types of inventories, there are a bunch of attributes or information that you maintain. And that's what makes GLPI very useful because you can now customize the different types of asset attributes. By default, there are plenty of attributes already defined. So for example, what is showing here is a computer, in this case a server. So under the server or computer tab, you will see ways to define or maintain information about the manufacturer, model number, serial numbers, license keys for software, the location of the asset, where it is kept, or where it is located physically. It can also specify what part of the network it is, whether it's a local LAN or a WAN or a subnet. We can define that. It can also define the end user, who's going to use this particular asset. You also have a way to define what other support agents or technicians are going to be resolving issues, if there are any with this particular asset type. This task can be customized. It can add more fields or remove fields, which you don't like or don't need at this point in time. There is also an interesting concept of relationships that can be defined or maintained inside the assets module. First one is called connections. Here is an example where one asset is connected to another asset. If you are an end user, most likely you will have your own desktop PC. You will have a printer. You will have your mouse and keyboard and also maybe speakers. So all of these assets are individual assets, which are assets on a standalone basis. But somehow they are all connected because they are either physically connected to each other or they are associated to a single user. In this case, we will use connections to define how different assets are connected to each other. The second concept of relationship is components. In this scenario, the asset can be a part of another asset. In this case, it's called a component or another asset. For example, if you open up your desktop PC, you're going to see your motherboard. You'll see your sound card, your video card. You'll see a network card and maybe hard disks and DVD-ROMs and so on. So all these components are basically assets which are part of another asset. So you can maintain information about each of the components as well as the final asset, which is your PC as well. The next module is the assistance menu, where you find a bunch of ITSM features. The first one to talk about is ticketing and help desk. Now ticketing is a core part of your ITSM framework. So you will need a very good ticketing system, and that's exactly what GLPI provides. This is a complete functionality for ticketing use cases. You can define SLA support tickets. You can manage different types of categories. Urgency impact on priority for each of the tickets. You can also have an approval process in place. In case of tickets that were made up from your boss. You can also have routing logic on how these tickets should be assigned to different people in the support team. And based on that, the ticket automatically gets routed to a particular technician, a support agent, or another user. There's a module called Problem Management, and this is another concept that is used in the ITIL framework. It can manage problems and track them to completion using the Problem Management module. Here you can create a new item called a problem ticket. And using that problem ticket, you will now define what the root cause of this problem has been. And based on this cause, you will identify a solution on how the problem can be fixed, and then come up with a plan for fixing the problem through assigning different tickets to people who are responsible for fixing this problem. Likewise, you can also use cost under the problem management module. And when you include costs under the problem management module, you're going to use this as part of the financial and budget planning. We'll cover budgets in a later slide, but it is possible to associate costs with a particular problem management ticket as well. We also have a change management module. This is where you can initiate a new change request. We can link a particular change request to problems, assets, tickets, and other projects. 
you can do an impact analysis of what will happen if I make this change. Based on that, you can come up with a deployment and a backup plan for making this change. And you can also have a solution definition on how this change is going to be implemented. In many cases, change process requires approvals by different people in the company. So in this case, you would have something called a change approval board or a change control board. In either case, you can define changes and have approvers who approve the change, and based on the approver, the change is either accepted or rejected. So this is a way to define approvals for different changes within the ITSM module inside GLPI. We also have a planning view. This is where you can look at the different types of activities coming up, whether it is a task or a reminder, or a ticket that needs a resolution, or changes that need approval or execution. A planning screen can be looked at monthly, weekly, or on a daily basis. It gives you a quick snapshot of different events that are upcoming during this particular time frame. It's a nice way to keep track of all the activities that might be happening in your department. There is also a statistics module where you can view some graphs and charts. It covers tickets, problems, changes, and assets. There are other modules you can add to this basic GLPI to get more in-depth analysis of different types of data or reports and statistics. In this module, you can also do filtering by dates, by duration. It could be a daily or weekly report, or it could be a custom date report. You can also filter based on status types of tickets or problems and assets. This is quite handy if you are doing basic analysis. On the management module, you have supply management. This is a place for maintaining information about your suppliers. This could be hardware vendors, this could be software suppliers, distributors, and others who are in a position to supply direct IT inventory or support along with that. This is where you link them to other assets and contracts, documents, tickets, problems, and changes that is going to help in identifying which supplier to contact in case there's a problem and you need some help. For example, if your RAM is faulty and there's a problem, you may want to contact the supplier for the RAM and get a replacement. So I do think you'll find the supply management screen very handy. There's also contracts management. A big part of managing IT is managing IT support. Support includes warranties, and support contracts. Warranty could be for hardware contract or support, or it could be for a software service. In either case, all these types of contracts can be managed through the Contracts Management module. Here's where you create a list of contracts. You specify the type of contract. You also specify the time period for the contract's coverage, when it's going to expire, and whether you want to automatically renew the contracts. The contract screen can also be linked with our GLPI elements, such as assets, suppliers, tickets, problems, changes, and so on. We'll use that when we cover ITSM in more detail. Budgets management is borrowed from the financial world, so there's a way to do some basic financial management inside GLPI, and budget management is one place to start. Essentially, you can clear the budget for different IT activities, this could be used for purchasing an IT asset, or it could be used for purchasing software, it could be used for purchasing support contracts, or for solving problems, or making a change. So when you do that, the budget management screen will tell you how much of your budget has been utilized by different types of ITSM activities. This helps in giving you an overall financial point of view on your ITSM support processes and operations. There is also a contracts management screen that's pretty much a simple address book and a kind of database. You can create contracts and map them to different suppliers. And just a quick look up for your IT team so they can know who to contact and the supplier in case there's a problem. There's also a documents management screen. This is where you put in all your documents. And interestingly, GLPI allows you to attach files and other documents in many different screens but all the documents eventually are going to be stored in one single location, which is your Documents folder. The Documents Management screen is basically that folder which allows you to look at all your different documents that have been uploaded into GLPI 
by different users or technicians. You can either directly upload the document or you can attach folders and files in different screens. Even in that case, the files will be centrally located in the same folder, which is the Documents folder. They will eventually link to other GLPI screens that could be assets, suppliers, tickets, problems, changes, and so on. Now, under the Tools menu, the first one to look at is Knowledge Base. Knowledge Base is a critical component of the ITIL framework. Knowledge Base allows your IT team to create a database of known problems and known resolutions. That's how you would use the Knowledge Base to train new IT support agents who are supporting your team. And it also minimizes the time to solve a problem, especially if it's known. So you can publish an article, you can do some formatting with it, you can add categories and so on. You can control the visibility dates on which this particular knowledge will be available and when it goes out of circulation. You can also indicate what the target audience group is and what kind of users or IT group are supposed to look at this knowledge base article. There's also a simple project management module where you can define new tasks and projects. You can define new tasks and give them a priority. You can assign owners. You can assign start date and end date. And then you can also look them up in a Gantt chart. When we do some more detail on this in a later training, we will talk about how to use the project management module. It is very handy when you are planning activities like change management, which is going to be a big part of the ITIL process. There is also a reservations module, and this is a key item for handling reservations. And in a typical IT management scenario, there are multiple items which are shared between different users. An example of that would be a conference room, or it could be a separate laptop, which can be used by a sales team visiting a customer for a demonstration of your products. In this case, the IT team would maintain a pool of reservable items, and the GLPI screen allows you to basically keep track of what's happening with your reservable items. There's also a reservation calendar, which shows the availability of a particular item for future reservations. You can also do approvals on reservations or an automated request. It is possible to have a manager or an IT team approve or reject that reservation. It is possible for you to assign reservations based on time-wise availability. And finally, there is a way to do reoccurring reservations. For example, if there is a staff meeting that happens on a monthly or weekly basis and you want to use a particular conference room, you can reserve the conference room for that particular time slot in the week or in the month. This admin menu is where we do some background administration. The first one is user management. Now GLPI is basically a marketing tenancy product, so it supports multiple levels of admins. The first one is called super admin. And then you have admins, regular admins. And finally, you have users. The super admin controls all of the admins and users. It controls the configuration and customization from GLPI. Essentially, Super Admin sees the entire GLPI feature set. In a multi tenancy scenario, the Super Admin can see each and every company which has information under GLPI. The admin can be limited to sets of users. For example, for Company A, you could have one admin, and for Company B, you could have another admin. That's how you would use admins. Admins cannot customize GLPI, but they can change some configuration items, but not all. Finally, you have regular users. Their permissions are limited or set by either the admin or super admin, and there are regular users who are looking for GLPI on a daily basis, accessing information, filing tickets, and getting help from the IT support team, but they do not do any administration of GLPI backend. They are not responsible for managing GLPI at all. You also have an alternative concept, which is groups. Groups is a logical grouping of users. In a company, you will have subdivisions or departments or branch locations. In some scenarios, you can use groupings. A group can also contain items, assets. Permissions can be allocated per group for different screens. You could also have a group which has access to your change management module. You could have another group that has access to only a ticketing system. That is all possible by using permissions. 
It is very useful in multi-tenant situations where you could potentially have many companies having their database in a single GLPI. And you want to restrict access to certain groups and certain sets of users. It's possible to link tickets or problems and changes to different types of groups if you like. A related concept is profiles. A profile is a way of controlling the read and write access to the different features in GLPI. This can be associated with items and tickets. It can also assign users to a particular profile. In addition, you can also have groups which are assigned to a particular profile. Based on the permissions on the profile, a particular user or user group will be able to see certain features or certain screens on GLPI. And sometimes you aren't going to be able to see certain screens on GLPI based on what you set as permissions. The next concept is entities. Now, entities is basically a way to manage multiple organizations. Organizations could basically be different companies or it could be subdivisions within a single company. So if you have a single company, then your root entity would become your single company. And then you would have sub-entities, which are basically your departments and subdivisions. Now, if you have multiple companies, then in this case you define each and every company as an entity. There will be multiple entities, and within each entity you will have sub-entities, which will be departments and subdivisions of each company. So there is another simple way of supporting multi-tenancy, and a single GLPI can be used across multiple companies. The concept of entities, along with profiles, groups, and admin permissions, is basically a very powerful and flexible way that allows you to use GLPI in any complex organizing structure. Rules is another tool for automating a lot of actions, so you can define actions to be taken based on certain conditions. That's how we define a rule. For example, we want to assign an asset to a company entity. In this case, you would define a rule that says, for these particular assets, assign them to company A. That could be conditions which are based on logical expressions, and that's the power of rules. Rules can be applied to different types of features inside GLPI. So you could have items, entities, tickets, routing users, authorizations, and many more. It's completely customizable when GLPI is used along with rules. The rules also works with dictionaries, and we will cover them when we talk about the rule engine in a later presentation. There are a bunch of advanced menus. These advanced menus are part of the second menu that I talked about earlier. This is where you do configuration and customization. You can change what the drop-down list looks like. You can add other remote components. You can define SLAs. You can have notification checks. You can control user authentication. There are many more setups that can be done using the Setup and Advanced Menu option. We will cover these topics in a later presentation. There's also another way of extending the functionality of GLPI, and this is using plugins. Now, earlier, we talked about how there is a wider developer community for GLPI. So essentially, using GLPI, I wanted to extend the functionality by downloading modules. That is led by some other person who is using GLPI. And this module is available to you using the plugin website. There is a very powerful and easy way of borrowing somebody else's code and taking advantage of their work through the open source framework. So this brings us to the end of this presentation, which is an overview and part one of the training programs. For more information, please visit our website and look under the video section. You can contact sales at altnext.com or call us at 1-800-913-5553. Thank you for watching this video, and we appreciate your time.